Hey everybody, uh, so uh, I wanted to go ahead and uh, get into the insect muscular system with you. Uh, so um, if you could go ahead and take a couple of notes here while we're working through this, this should help uh, make the homework assignment go a little easier for you. One of the things I wanted to mention um, as we're getting started here is I know we as humans are very human centered and so we're like, whoa, we got 800 muscles or so. Um, there are a lot of insects, even very small insects, that, that outnumber uh, the number of uh, uh, muscles that humans have. Uh, the other thing I'd like you to think about, uh, because, oh, you remember, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Uh, thinking about what we've talked about on the tracheal systems and the direct access of oxygen to uh, every cell, um, think about the relationship between the number of muscles that the ins insects have and um, the amount of mitochondria that might, requ might be required in their bodies. Okie doke. Uh, so there are four different types of muscles within insects and I'll detail each of these four for you right now. Um, the uh, visceral muscles, uh, viscera basically means guts and so um, these are gut muscles essentially uh, and they will um, encase uh, and surround ducts and things. Uh, peristalsis is the word for basically the squeezing and moving of food through the digestive tract um, and your body does this too. Once you swallow food um, your intestines will take care of that all by itself and do peristalsis. Uh, and so, anyway, so those are the visceral muscles found in insects. Segmental ones, uh, these are found in the abdomen uh, and telescoping segments. So if you could imagine the yellow jacket with its abdomen pulsing kind of like an accordion, um, this, and, and this happens in a lot of different insects, they can kind of constrict and expand their abdomen to increase blood pressure or breathe better. Um, legless locomotion, so this is movement uh, by caterpillars and maggots and other insects that might be, uh, you know, have legless abdomens or not have legs at all. Uh, you can also uh, compress the segmental muscles to increase the internal body pressure. So that increases blood pressure and uh, that can help you fill up wings. Or if you're a dragonfly nymph, you can shoot that little mouth powered out and get some uh, to catch some prey. Okay. Uh, appendicular uh, to append is to add something to the main body. So the appendix is a little addition on your intestines. Appendages are your legs and arms and wings, things that are stuck to the outside of the body. Okay, so these are legs and cerci and all that good stuff. Uh, and then finally the fourth part uh, or the fourth type of muscles are flight muscles. Those are only found in the thorax and they are only dealing with wings. All right, uh, within the flight muscles, these again are only uh, working with the wings. They are only found in the thorax. There are two different types of flight muscles that are found within insects. Of course, this would be insects that have wings. Um, the first type is a synchronous uh, flight muscle and that produces one muscle contraction or one wing flap for each uh, nerve impulse. Um, ultimately that comes out to about 5 to 15 wing flaps every second. Uh, and so this is found in a lot of large insects that uh, have large wings and you can't hear them flapping. Uh, so a butterfly while it's flying is totally silent. Uh, you can't hear a super noisy dragonfly as it's flapping by. Uh, and so it's, it's a much slower um, flapping. Uh, so it's one muscle contraction per nerve impulse. 
the other type is asynchronous, and that's not tied a one-to-one. -one. This actually produces many muscle contractions, many wing flaps for each one nerve impulse. So it's kind of like a rapid fire, you know, for one nerve impulse. Uh, this produces uh, wing flaps of about uh, 500 to 1,000 wing flaps per second. Uh, and these are the insects that you can actually hear a buzz. They're flapping at a frequency that actually produces noise that humans can hear. Uh, so the asynchronous, that little you know, of a uh, mosquito in your ear, uh, you can go, oh, that has asynchronous uh, flight muscles. Okay, cool. So, uh, this is kind of interesting. Insects do not get tired. Uh, as you know from when we were talking about the tracheal system, uh, the insects do not uh, have to worry about having their heart pumping red blood cells. They do not need a carrier molecule. There's fresh air going to every single body cell, and this includes their muscles. And so insects don't get uh, tired. They don't uh, they've got that constant access to oxygen. So you're never going to have a dragonfly who's like, Woo! Okay, you guys go ahead. I can't take it anymore. I just got to catch my breath. Uh, I'll, I'll catch up with you later. Don't worry about me. And they got to go sit under a tree and relax and recuperate or anything. They don't get tired. And again, their mitochondria get access to oxygen constantly. And so there's no depletion of oxygen or anything like that. Uh, so they don't get exhausted. The other cool thing is that they don't have even the metabolic pathway. They've never evolved it because of the constant access to oxygen. Uh, so they, they don't do that lactic acid fermentation. This is also known as anaerobic respiration. Uh, this is, uh, if you have ever done exercise, let's say PE class, your teacher's saying run 4,000 times around the track and you're like really trying and you're working hard and your muscles start burning. Insects do not get that muscle burn uh, because, well, there you go. They got fresh access to oxygen all the time. Uh, and so you're never going to get a, you know, a cricket or a grasshopper or some flying insect who's like, oh, I'm having leg cramps. It's burning. This is too much. I got to stop. I got to rest. Um, they just they haven't even evolved that because they don't get tired. They don't have this emergency backup plan uh, if their body runs low on oxygen, but they still have to do work. You yourself as a human being. Uh, you have probably experienced this, is the burn uh, when doing exercise or something. If you're not breathing enough, uh, your muscles are like, dude, I got to get this work done, but you're not giving me enough oxygen. It then switches to a backup process. Uh, unfortunately, that backup process does not produce enough energy as if you're breathing enough, and it produces lactic acid in your muscles, and that is that muscle burn. So... To summarize this, um, insects don't get exhausted, they don't get winded, and they don't have muscle burns from working too hard or running too fast or whatever. Um, I do want to draw your attention. I have a little note to self I see in here uh, on page 86. When they're talking about calories to do the work, um, when you're reading, uh, you know, ingredient label on human food on a box or a can or whatever, uh, they're talking about the calories with the capital C, which technically is actually a thousand regular calories. But um, you don't want to sit there and talk about a burger that has 250,000 calories. Uh, it looks much nicer and easier to just print 250 calories or whatever. So yeah, I'm sure there's a burger with 250 calories, right? More like a thousand. Okay, sounds good. All right, so the uh, the next chunk of the the few pages in the book that are dealing with the muscular system are actually talking about warming up. 
flight muscles and then cooling down the body uh, from so much uh, generation of heat and everything else. And so, um, like in the old cars in the 70s and 80s, you used to have to warm up your car in the morning, right? Uh, large insects uh, have to get their thoracic, their flight muscles, warmed up effectively so they can flap and, uh, and fly well in the morning. And so um, what they'll do, uh, for example, with like butterflies and moths, they'll stick their wings in the sun and they'll just let the sun soak into their wings warm up the blood that is circulating in their wings and uh, get that going uh, before flight. Um, I do have a video uh, link in this PowerPoint, so i got to find that and I'll provide that with you, or to you. Uh, the other thing is that sometimes you could have problems with excessive heat and you don't want to roast yourself if you're an insect and have a fever and, and all that from flying. And so... Um, the abdominal plates on the abdomen, the belly plates on the abdomen, uh, which are called abdominal sterna, if you remember the sternum, are, are those uh, ventral body plates. Um, those are actually hairless. So if you went up to a bumblebee and said, here, let me see the underside of your abdomen, it would be nice and smooth and shiny. Uh, no hair on there to trap heat and, and all that good stuff. Uh, so the abdomen actually functions as a radiator in some of these large, hairy insects and will have less fur or setae hairs uh, on them. Okay, and we're, we're kind of wrapping up this PowerPoint here for you. Um, there is a little bit of a difference uh, within insect flight, and that is that the, the wings of insects are actually additional uh, structures. They are not modified legs or modified arms or anything like that, like a mammal or a bird. Uh, those wings are modified arms and modified hands. Uh, bug wings are a little extra, and they are hanging off the back of the thorax and have nothing to do with the legs. Uh, so... Anyway, so insect flight is a little bit different than there. Um, I do have another video uh, link. Uh, I'm presumably a video on YouTube, so I'll provide that a little bit later on. Uh, that won't be clickable within this um, uh, PowerPoint. Uh, and then there is some discussion of how the muscles actually work uh, to, pro to provide flight because you're not gonna get flight just from straight up and down flapping. There's gotta be some twisting involved. Uh, there's gotta be some front to back muscle contractions and relaxing. Uh, and so we're, you're gonna learn a little bit about longitudinal flight muscles. Um, and so uh, I just want to let you know that in general here, for, at least for this slide, is that uh, there are several different muscle groups involved in flight. And it's not just a straight up and down. You have little, little uh, uh, you know, snaps and twists and levers and, and muscles that run lengthwise through the insect from front to back, as well as ones that go from the notum to the sternum uh, or the back surface to the belly surface. And if you uh, compress that and relax, all of those working together actually provide the flight uh, for the insects. Uh, sometimes the twisting uh, is also, um, you know, required to get flight out of that. Well, uh, welcome to the very last slide of the PowerPoint. And um, what I wanted to do is give you a little bit more detail on how the actual flapping of the insect wings works. And so uh, what we're looking at is a cross section of the insect. So like if you sliced a bug from front to back, you know, across its chest, um, this is a cross section and um, we're also looking, let me bring my uh, cursor over here. Uh, we're looking at the notum 
uh, which is the plate. These are dorsal plates in the thorax that are um, that are making up the quote back of the insect, and um, and then the sternum. Whoops, there we go. Uh, the sternum is down below. So in the center, we've got these greenish-looking muscles, and they are relaxing at this point. And the whoop, there we go. Uh, and then what's happening here is we've got our uh, red and orange muscles that are going up and down, connecting from the mesonotum or the metanotum down to the mesosternum or the metasternum. And these are contracting. And if you focus on this little area right here, this is actually a hinge. And so when you have this pulling down, that is flapping the wings up. And so the red ones are contracting while these longitudinal muscles going front to back of the insect are relaxing. And that flaps the wings up. Then when you um, have the muscles take turns, the longitudinal muscles, whoops, lost my cursor here. Come on, my cursor. There we go. Uh, when you have the longitudinal muscles that are contracting and they're kind of squishing the bug from front to back. Uh, and these side muscles, uh, these ones going up and down, when they relax, what that does is that actually pops this notum up and it winds up dropping the wings down. And so you have these taking turns of contracting and relaxing uh, going on between these two sets of muscles, these longitudinal flight muscles that are here in the middle, or these um, direct flight muscles, these ones going up and down. So let me get my cursor off to the side here. Um, so essentially, while one set of muscles is going contract, relax, contract, relax, contract, relax, the other set of muscles is going relax, contract, relax, contract, relax, contract. And that is what actually adds the flapping motion. Uh, and then notice, uh, especially in the picture here at the bottom, is you have some wing twisting going on, and that will provide you with the forward flight or the back flight, uh, backward reverse kind of stuff that some insects are able to do.